Yo guys, what is up? And welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be going over this Flipsky electronic speed controller. So, a little bit about this speed controller. It's based on the open source VSC. They're mostly used in things like electrics, uh, electric skateboards and heavy duty RC cars. So, what I'm going to use it for is as a replacement to those other cheap controllers that I bought. So, Immediately, you can see there's a lot more to it than the other ones. So in the bag, we get the ESC, we get a USB cable, and we get a connection for the hall sensor. And some instructions. So this basically just goes over different things, what it is, um, different parts. So you can see where the hall sensor connection is, the USB connection, and then some other connections that we're not gonna be using. Right, so first of all, let's just compare this to one of the other controllers. Right, this isn't the one that we had in the video before because it doesn't have the whole sensor connection, but it's pretty much the same thing. So you can see straight away that there's quite a clear difference with these. Um, I've heard a lot of things about these controllers not being quality tested, so they can arrive faulty or not even last very long at all. Whereas these, I've had nothing but, well, I've seen nothing but good reviews for them. I mean, the connections are already soldered on. It's wrapped in like a protective heat shrink film. And yep, it's got the servo connection. So to, to use these, all you have to do is plug it into your RC receiver. Whereas this one, you have to use some sort of Arduino or a potentiometer to control them. So with this, when I mentioned about modifiable, um, you can connect it to a computer and there's lots of different perimeters that you can set, like maximum RPM, maximum braking power. Uh, you can even map out controllers and stuff um, or whatever sort of input device you're using. So with this, I'm gonna be using it with an Arduino and we're probably gonna end up using four of these at one point, but at the moment we've only got one, like at the time of recording this video. So, yeah, when I was, I've actually set this up. This this is the new one that's arrived today, and this is my one that I made earlier. So, we've got a battery connection, which goes onto the 10 cell hoverboard motor, well, hoverboard batteries, and connection block, and a few more connection blocks which go to the motor connections. And I've also used the hall sensor connection and rewired that up to a hoverboard motor hall sensor connection. Right, so initially, before you, well, when I first plugged this into the motor, it was a bit kind of jumpy. It wasn't running very smooth. Um, but there's like a motor setup wizard in the software and you can run it and it turns it slowly and it um, configures all the hall sensor positions and impedance and things like that. And then, well, basically after I did that test and run it, the motor was so much smoother and much more controllable. Even like at low RPM, it had loads of torque. Similar with the last robot project. With this one, we're gonna be controlling it with an Arduino. So we've got the Arduino, you know, we've got a USB shield, USB host shield, and then we've got the sensor shield on top. So the sensor shield is just to make it easier for connecting the servos, we don't really need it, but it helps. So all we have to do, get the servo input for the controller and plug it straight into the Arduino. So I've already made a program for this. So it all runs with the PlayStation 3 controller. Um, obviously at the moment, well, when I was doing this video at first, we only had one controller. I managed to build like a little test rig, which is just basically the battery wheel, a couple of stabilizers and this is controlled with the PlayStation 3 controller again. So we're gonna take that outside and test it out.
on that bit, you see where it's flipped over. That's because um, these controllers have a brake, which is what I forgot to mention. These ones don't, these ones do. And the brake's really good. You see, there's no trouble uh, trying to wheel spin. There's, there's loads of power, and what's crazy as well, I'm only using a five amp fuse on the battery, so it's using hardly any of it. Okay, so on that last bit, you see it totally flipped over. Um, again, that's just because of the brake and all the, um, well, I've, I tried to focus all the weight as low as possible, but just because the motor and the battery are so heavy and they're quite close together. So anyway, that's it for this video. In the next one, I'm probably gonna be using, well, we are, we're, we're gonna be using both of these controllers in the test rig. So it's gonna have two wheels. It's probably also gonna have <clears throat> these wheelchair caster wheels. I was thinking of using smaller ones, but, um, you know, what's the, what's the point? You, you wanna go off-road and drive off curbs, that kind of stuff. Little small, tiny wheels are just gonna get stuck on everything. So this, this test rig is going to be quite a lot bigger and again it's going to be with the PlayStation 3 controller. Um, there is one little thing I'm going to make sure I put in and that's with like, so you've got the two wheels and if you're controlling each one independently it's going to be very difficult to drive in a straight line because they're going to be, even a slight difference in speed is going to change um, the direction in which it's going. So. There's a little trick I figured out. Um, we're gonna have it, so there's one button on the controller, you press it, and it's just gonna lock both speed controllers to one analog stick. So when you press that button, it's gonna move both motors exactly the same speed, which will keep it straight. So anyway, make sure you subscribe to see that next video. And hopefully it won't be too long, maybe like a couple of days or something. And that's it, thanks for watching.